My name is Julian David Stone, and I am the author of No Cameras Allowed, my career as an outlaw rock and roll photographer. Th this all started uh, in the early 80s when I was a teenager, and like most kids, I dreamed of being a rock star, and that didn't last very long when it became clear I had no musical ability. So I also loved photography, and I decided I would put the two together and would start photographing rock concerts. What I didn't realize when I showed up to see my first show with my camera, which was the Ramones in the early 80s, you can't do that. Um, I tried to walk into a club with a big bag of equipment and the guard just pointed up at a sign and said, sorry, no cameras allowed. And in that moment, I decided, you know what, I think there's a way I can make this happen anyway. And I, I hid the equipment all over my body, snuck into the Ramon show, uh, put all the equipment together in the bathroom, came out and started shooting. And after that show, I was hooked. And over the next few years, I went on to shoot over 10,000 pictures of just about every major act of the 80s. If you shoot a show professionally, back when I was first doing it, even when, when I was doing it as an outlaw and then very briefly went pro, um, you were shooting film, so you only could shoot two, three hundred pictures at a show. You were limited by swapping out rolls of film, and each roll was only 36 pictures. Today, you can go in there with a card and shoot three, four thousand pictures, and that's nothing. You know, it doesn't cost anything. Back then, I had to pay for a lot of processing. Now you go home, upload it to your computer, wipe the card, and you know, you're ready to go again. So you can cer certainly shoot a lot more at the shows. And also, in terms of what I was doing, in terms of smuggling in the equipment, they've kind of given up trying to keep people from bringing stuff in because everybody has a phone. So uh, when, when, when phones first proliferated with cameras, you could see they were still making some attempts to stop people. Now they've just given up. They realize there's nothing you can do. So my favorite picture that I ever took of all time was Prince. Uh, was a shot of Prince that I took at the absolute peak of, of his career in, in 1985 during the Purple Rain tour. This was the closest to Beatlemania I'd ever seen in my life. I was in college, I just started college, and I can remember walking down the, the halls of my dorm and hearing Prince playing in room after room after room, all the Purple Rain album. So I took pictures of them at the Los Angeles Forum. I smuggled in my camera. It was a whole crazy ordeal, and it was a can of Aquanet that made it possible. We hid it in my friend's uh, huge lens in my friend's purse, and she had a can of Aquanet above the lens so that when the guard opened it up, thinking, okay, what, looking at the outside of the purse and seeing this weird bulge, she was like, what is that? Oh, it's a can of Aquanet. He let us in. Underneath was my, uh, was my big telephoto. This, this was the 80s, so hair was big and a can of Aquanet didn't stick out that much. Um, so these photos from that show are my absolute favorite, including one in particular that is the favorite one I've ever taken, which just shows Prince in his full majesty with his arm up and a flowing boa and just absolutely at the peak of, of what Prince was. This was all 35 years ago, and this was all done from a place of love. You know, I was a teenager doing this, so I wasn't thinking of it from the standpoint of, is this legal, is it not legal? I was just having, ex I was just excited. And to me, it was part of the rebellion that is rock and roll. It was my way of connecting to that. So I was just trying to build a portfolio. I certainly didn't sell them. I didn't do anything with them except use it to, to eventually turn pro. Now, 30, 35 years later, after consulting with my attorney, um, I am allowed to publish them as my work. I can't license them to anybody else. I can represent them as I am, as my work. They're my artistic expressions, and so that's why I, I put them together in a limited edition coffee table book. You know, I was, I was doing it rogue, like you said, and loved it and was passionate about it, and I, started, I had a good portfolio, and I saw an advertisement in a local uh, Bay Area magazine in San Francisco that they were having an open call for photographers. So I thought, oh, here's my chance. So I put everything together in a portfolio book. I walk in the door, they start to go through it, and they're looking at these pictures and they start looking up at me and they're like, where have you been? These are fantastic. And then they get to this picture of Bono, of U2, and they stop. And they're looking at it for a long time because there was two of, there were two people with me in the in the meeting and they're looking at this picture and then they finally look up at me and they go you know two weeks ago we were looking for a good picture of Bono for our cover if you had come in with that before then this would have been our cover so needless to say they hired me on the spot and I and that I started to work for them and I started working for another magazine in the, around the same time in the Bay Area called artist magazine and uh, and then the craziest part of it was in the midst of all of this and again keep in mind this is a teenager and it's 1984 1985 I typed up a list of everything that I had shot and I mailed it to Rolling Stone magazine 
So I send it off to Rolling Stone and don't think anything about it. And then one morning, it's about eight in the morning, and I think I had shot a show the night before, and I reach for my phone. It's like, hello. And it's like, hi, this is so-and-so from Rolling Stone magazine. Uh, we want to talk to you about your photos. And suddenly, like, I, you know, I snap awake, and I'm talking to this photo editor from Rolling Stone, and she's going down my list, and she asks for basically five different bands. She wants pictures of the Talking Heads, Tom Petty. I think she wanted some prints. You know, there were a few, and she wanted me to send them to it. So I'm sort of like still half awake writing this all down, like just going, is this really happening? And then I remember she, she was very nice, but very curt, because you know I think she had figured out that she was dealing with a teenager. Um, and she I, I asked some question about like, well, do I ship them to you? And she was like, well, actually, we're gonna give you a FedEx account number. And she gives me the number and then I'm like, great, I got it. And she's just like, okay, bye, thanks, and hangs up. And then I remember just sitting there going, did that really all just happen? And then I looked down and of course I have the notes that I had scribbled uh, to, to, to make it real, but th that was very surreal. That was sort of just part of the trajectory where everything was just kind of going up and up and up. If you had to do it all again, is there any regrets? Is there any, <laughs> like, would you do anything different? If, if I had to do it again, I probably wouldn't have stopped taking the rock and roll photos, particularly after I, the Springsteen show, I pretty much hung it up. I had these 10,000 pictures that I really, I really, in a, in a weird way, never really looked at them because, you know, I would go shoot a show, I'd shoot a few hundred pictures, I'd make some contact sheets. That was what you had to do back in the day before you could upload them to your uh, to your computer. And, you know, I might print one or two and then that was it. I was on to the next show. I mean, at certain points I was shooting five shows a week, so there was no time to look at them. So I put everything away and for 30, 35 years, this archive just sat. It followed me around. I carried it around from place to place. Amazingly, it survived. So looking back on it, I kind of I wish I'd kept doing it. And I also sometimes, I kept a sort of a fun record of all the shows I went to. And what I can't remember is most of them I photographed, but sometimes I didn't. And I don't know why I didn't photo. Like, I'm like, why didn't I take pictures of the pretenders? You know, like, it's just, I, I'd love to know what my mindset was. But again, it was just all fun. So you can follow me on uh, uh, Instagram at Julian D. Stone. Uh, Facebook is Julian David Stone. And Twitter is at Julian D. Stone. Hi, my name's Julian David Stone, and you've just been buzzed. <laughs>